Hello, my beautiful vaccinated vixens. It's Michelle Visage. Welcome to another episode of What You Packing. Joining me today, although virtually, is the lovely Lady Camden. Hello, Camden. Hello, Michelle. Oh, it's so good to see you. You look gorgeous as always. As do you, my lovely little ginger lamb. Let's talk for a minute uh, about why this setup looks different. What's happening is when we shot uh, the What You Pack In, you had strep throat, correct? I did have strep throat and I was, I thought about just doing it anyway and then I was like, no, I don't wanna get people sick. I'm not gonna be that girl. So I'm just gonna be smart and <sighs> swallow my pride and do it from the hotel room. <laughs> Doesn't matter. So here we are, we're doing it from the hotel room. Nobody's getting infected, yes. everybody's good. And here you are in the final. Oh no, I can't believe it. It's, it's even just to hear that, it's like, it feels very surreal. How long have you been in the United States? I moved to the United States in 2010. So I've been here 11 years and I've gone back and forth between Sacramento and San Francisco. So I kind of have a relationship with both. And you've got one American parent, one English parent, is that correct? Mm -hmm. My mom, who's a huge fan of yours. Oh, uh, hi mom. Hi mom. <laughs> I love that. She's American and she lives in London. She she moved for the Mary Poppins fantasy. You know, she was in love Don't with Vivian Westwood and yeah. all that, yeah. And my dad is British, so I'm, I'm a bit of both. So do you think you get your taste for fashion from your mother? Yeah, for sure. I think my dad always likes something like different and like that's why he kind of was really supportive of me doing drag and all that. But my mom has like a punk rock heart, you know, she was like, sister. she was a goth back in the day and her wedding dress was like black and she had black goth oh, hair. I love and that. She's always just been wanting to do something that's just like a little edgy and different. And uh, she loves the villains in movies and she's very that, you know. That's why we would get along great, your mother and I. Yes. Were you raised in Camden Town in, in London? Yeah, my dad used to run a nightclub called the Electric Ballroom. And, you know, I would go there after school when he'd still be doing office manager work or whatever. And sort of to keep me focused, he would let me have the dance floor by myself. And he'd like turn the music on and, and like turn the lights on and stuff. And so I would, you know, skate around and just be like super gay and just live my fantasy. It was really fun. Growing up in Camden, which for people who don't know, is very trendy, very hip. It's still the home, yeah. um, in my opinion, of punk rock in London. There's really no other scene apart from Camden. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I mean, of course it's evolved over the last, you know, 20, 30 years yeah. and like any funky area of a city it's become more gentrified but back in the day that was where kids would just go and like just to be seen they would wear their sort of neon crazy outfits or like black punk leather loads of studs crazy, crazy hair. hair like yeah. multicolor hair plastic tubes coming out of the hair and my sister was very much in that too and she was a dj at the club and you know it was very scary and intimidating when you're like little but um it was definitely like a cool place to kind of grow up my favorite city in the world is new york city that's in my home my other favorite city is London. And if you yeah. if you ask me, I would like to go and live in London. So what brought you over here? Why would you live such leave such a great place? Yeah, I honestly I never thought I would, but you know, I wanted to be a professional ballet dancer and um I just kind of went where the jobs were, where I went where the work was and Sacramento was a place that I honestly had to look it up when I got the job. I was like, where is that? <laughs> we love Sacramento. Yeah, and I was like, it's California. It must be amazing. And, you know, and, and it was. It, it was definitely different to London, but I fell in love with it over, like, the five years I was there. I just really fell in love with California, and I was dancing as much as I could. I was choreographing. I got to learn about drag. So it kind of just became home, you know. Are you still dancing? Um, I dance here and there. I don't dance like for a living anymore because you know drag has kind of taken over. But I still choreograph, which kind of keeps me connected to that world. You spent your whole life training to be a ballet dancer. You came mm -hmm. to Sacramento to be part of a ballet company. Uh, where's the transition when you decide I'm going to leave the core because I want to? do full-time drag. That's You've trained your whole life for this. How do you make mm -hmm. peace with the fact that you're leaving behind everything you know to do something else? There's a lot of internal thoughts of like, is this giving up? Is this, is this closing a box or a chapter? A lot of people are not gonna understand why I wanna do drag in the ballet world. Mm. I think that because I still do some ballet in my drag, it keeps me connected to it. Right. For a while I was like, oh, I should do drag dancing, right? I shouldn't do ballet. People are gonna be like, what are you doing? But when I started to throw in the ballet, people were like, work. And so I was like, okay, maybe this is just a different way of doing drag, you know? By the way, one of our outfits that you wore that we have here was your tutu 
look, yeah. again, not traditional what people think of. You obviously were in the core as a male ballet dancer. I hate to gender, yeah. but I love <laughs> okay. that you came out in drag as this mm -hmm. full on tutu wearing ballet dancer. I saw the tutu prompt and I was like, oh, is this going to be expected for the ballerina so to come out in a tutu? What? So what, first of all? And secondly, you know, I, when I think about ballet, I know people will make fun of me because I talked about how I'm a dancer a lot on the show and <laughs> the girls were even like, oh, I'm sorry, did I? Did you say that you were a dancer? I didn't know that, Camden. <laughs> I was thinking a lot about this. Every kid eventually like finds their kind of tribe yes. or their like safe place. And ballet was the first time I literally felt like I could stop getting bullied and stop like having to deal with like mean kids at school because kids are mean, you know? And that was the first place where I felt like, okay, no one can get me here, yeah. like in this studio. No one can like tease me for looking gay or feminine. Like I'm surrounded by other boys that are that way too. And I felt like nothing bad can happen to you at the ballet, you know? And so it has like a sentimental feeling a part of it too. I wanted to kind of bring back that connection to like the old life that I had and, and how it was like an homage to finding that tribe and finding that place where you finally can relax and just be yourself. So you get the phone call yeah. that you made it on to RuPaul's Drag Race season 14. What goes through your mind? Oh my God, like literally it didn't feel real. It was like, is this a dream? Like, am I, you know, and it was really exciting. And then I was like, can I spare on this? I yes, yes, I yes, you can. I was like, I have to get ready. Yes. <laughs> what am I going to do? Yes. You know. So what did you do? I thought it would be smart to spend a week going. What is my dream drag? Like, what is, what are the things I've always wanted to do? And then I spent two weeks just like sewing, gluing, running around to fabric stores, asking people for help without telling them why. You know. What do you say to the kids? And I like to ask the queens this: the ones that are out there watching and they really want to audition and they're just afraid or they don't know what to do. What should they be prepared for besides learning to sew? There's a moment where you kind of have to do the jumping out of the plane thing where you've built yourself up to do something you want to do and, and it's taken so much to get there. And there's always that thought in your mind of like, no, 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 I don't want to do it, I'm scared. You know, and it's like, you have to sometimes just like push yourself to do it. One of the runways actually, I remember I was scared to, to do that fall and reveal thing. Mm -hmm. And right before I turned the corner, I had that feeling of like, no, 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 I just won't do it, I won't do it, you know? And then I just was like, no, just push yourself to do it. The worst thing that's gonna happen is that you learn something new, you know? 100%, it's pushing through mm -hmm. despite the fear. If you had a favorite challenge, which one would it be? The musical was really fun. Oh, you were wonderful, I, of course, right. in the Moulin yeah. Rouge. It was taking like a, you know, perceived notion as to what this role should be and thinking I don't fit into it and then right. going, how can I have fun in it? Right. And I think that's what I learned is like, it's up to you to create your own fun. I love the music video just because I felt like such a pop star, you know? <laughs> Who did you connect with? I really loved Asia. I think she's just, I mean, I knew her beforehand, but she's someone that, you know, we'll just call each other and talk for hours. She's lovely. I really love Angie. Angie for me was someone that it's just so different to me, you know? And I think that she makes me laugh. And for some reason, everything I say makes her crack up. Like, it doesn't even, it's not even it's funny. It's the accent, just like her accent. She's funny to you and you're funny to her. Everything I said, she was just cracking up backstage to the point where sometimes I would go out on, on the main stage and be like, this is hilarious because Angie was cracking up. And then the judges are like, maybe that needs work. You know? <laughs> I love that. So speaking about needing work, what was the challenge that you would like to do over again if you had the opportunity? Maybe the girl group challenge because I feel like I blended. And, and I think that that's kind of the worst thing that you can do on the show is to just like disappear. I remember Rue was like, you were great, but I just don't really remember it. Yeah. And even though that doesn't sound horrible, it's just not the feeling that you want going into this competition. So that would be something I would want to redo. You know, you always want to win. You always want to win. And then you hear, you are safe. And it's like, da, da, da. the Debbie yeah, Downer yeah. music. But really, not everybody could win every challenge. So being mm -hmm. safe and blending in, not the best, but certainly not the worst. Not the worst, yeah. Let's talk about this beautiful chap moment with the lightning bolts. Tell me about it. I put on Spotify and the first thing that came up was I want to break free. And it was a very dramatic moment where it was like raining and I was walking in the park and I was like singing it. And then we know that I'm not a singer after the show. <laughs> Luckily there was no one around, but yeah. it's like a movie moment of like, I want to break free, you know. And I thought it'd be fun to do some kind of Freddie Mercury reference. And uh, the lightning bolts is like one of his concert looks that he was photographed gotcha. in. And Dallas Coulter made that. Of course she did. And then we've got this candy necklace 
bra with this <laughs> pastel fantasy. That's your entrance look. Tell us the inspiration behind that. So I know a lot of girls love to come into the workroom with like a designer outfit that is very expensive and very polished. And while that is amazing, I just knew that wasn't me. And I wanted to come in wearing something that people back home would be like, that's our bitch, there she is. <laughs> I love you know, it. I wanted them to go, that's Camden, you know. And it's literally just recycled coat that I cut into separate spray painted in the alleyway of my building. I glued candy to this bra. It's really kind of trash, but I don't know, it just made me happy and it just felt like I was being very authentic to myself. <laughs> it goes to show the kids that are like, I can't do it because it's too expensive. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. always down to money. You can go to Goodwill, get a coat like that, mm -hmm. <laughs> cut it in half, make it your way, get some spray paint. I think that yeah. is adorable and I love that you did it with a nod to your friends back home. I wish you the best of luck. I'm so glad you're well, you're healthy. You know, I get to see you in person soon, get to hug you, but until then, thank you so much and congratulations on making the final. Thank you, Michelle. It's a dream come true to even hear you say that and to be with you now, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, sweetheart. And thank you for watching another episode of What You Packin'. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want gay sh Check out RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel and hit subscribe.